Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the EPMA, the IFHA, the PMU, and our sponsors, I would like to welcome you all to the Racing and Betting Forum 2015. We are delighted to see so many of you here today. In fact, we have a, a total of 160 participants from 27 different countries. So thank you all for attending this year's event, and I hope you find today informative, entertaining, and stimulating. Now in its eighth year, the Racing and Betting Forum brings together senior managers and executives from across the racing and betting industry to discuss innovation, new concepts, and future ideas. Now we're honored to have 19 speakers from six different nationalities, including nine from outside of the racing and betting sector this year, who will be able to offer a different perspective and share their best practice from other industries. But before we begin, I just need to share some practical information with you. As we're in the French Football Federation building, please note that you are not permitted to go upstairs or go outside except for during lunch. And you'll need to, a card to get back into the building, so please make sure that you collect a pass before you leave. You'll be pleased to hear that once again, you're allowed to access the playground and organize a match if you so wish at lunchtime, if you're feeling energetic and competitive. And if you need some football kit, then the French Federation shop are offering a 20% discount, especially for the racing and betting forum delegates. Hostesses will distribute flyers at the entrance of the auditorium. The networking lunch break will be approximately 1.15, and that's in the lounge at the rear that you can access at the back of the auditorium, where our sponsors and speakers will be waiting to meet you, and it's a great opportunity to ask further questions. We'd also like to thank our sponsors today, Sportec and Group Carus, along with the PMU and F IFHA, for their generous support of this year's event. Now this year, we are more interactive than ever, and we would like you to actively participate in the Racing and Betting Forum, not only by asking questions of our speakers and panelists, but also to take part by voting in our online survey during each session. Now we've set up a special forum web app, especially for this purpose. Now you'll all have been sent details in advance, but you can also click on a live link on the forum website. So that's www.rbforum.net, and you can see there, you just need to use the button Interact Live. So you click on that, and then you'll just be asked to register. So type your first name and last name, then you can join, and you'll see that we have a number of different tabs along the top of the page that enable you to ask questions and participate in our survey. Now on the forum web app, we also have our feedback form and there's some fantastic prizes available this year as an incentive. This year you could win an iPad Air as well as other unique racing experiences, including the chance to be a driver on a real sulky tonight at Vincennes or to watch the race from a bus on the inside of the track. So it's well worth remembering to fill out your forms at the end of the day. So to enter this prize draw, simply complete the feedback form online, and we'll then draw the winner this evening at Vincennes. Now the dinner this evening at Vincennes Racecourse is always very popular with delegates. It's a really fun and informal way to end the day. Two buses will be available to take us there, and they'll be leaving at 6 p.m. from the front of the French Football Federation building. Now the theme for this year's Racing and Betting Forum is all about reinventing the business model. How do we innovate in our organizations to ensure that we continually evolve in an increasingly competitive market against a backdrop of technological and social change? But what exactly does innovation mean to you? I'd like to start off today by asking you to get out your mobile phones, your smartphones, and your tablets, and then log on to our web app because we'd like to just ask you this simple question. When it comes to innovation, what is the first word which springs to your mind? So you go on the rbforum.net, download that web app, and click on the tag cloud. So the question again, when you think about innovation, what is the first word that comes to your mind? So just enter the word there. And we'll be returning to this at the end of the introduction to see what our word cloud looks like. Now, innovation is a buzzword used by companies 
often when they're talking about strategy, but do we actually have an integrated approach within our businesses to bring new ideas from conception through to implementation? We'll be exploring today how companies look at innovation internally and the processes they have adopted. We all, of course, acknowledge the importance of innovation in an ever-changing world, but the economic downturn post-2007 has forced organizations to formulate alternative strategies and adapt to market conditions in a more efficient, effective way. The racing and betting sector, of course, is no exception to this. We have had to continually evolve and, and then try new concepts in order to survive and hopefully thrive as we emerge on the other side of the recession. Now, this is especially true when the economic and technological landscape has completely changed and the way that customers interact with, engage and consume our products is now dramatically different. There have been plenty of examples over the years of market leaders who have failed to adapt to the changing environment and soon found that their businesses are verging on extinction. To give you a few examples of this, Nokia, of course, went from a, a dominant position in the mobile phone industry with a massive 48.7% share of the global market in 2007, falling to just 3.5% that's just five years later. Now that was largely due to their failure to innovate and adopt the smartphone technology championed by the likes of Apple and Samsung. Although Nokia developed one of the first smartphone prototypes back in 1996, it did not invest in the development of an effective operating platform or embrace touchscreen technology until it was far too late. Another example, Blockbuster, they ignored the threat initially that was posed by home delivery DVD rental. Their competitors, such as Love Film, did not penalize their customers for returning films late. And then, of course, along came downloads, subscription, and on-demand services, along with streaming services offered by the likes of Netflix. Now, Blockbuster even turned down the opportunity to go into partnership with a fledgling Netflix back in 2000. As a result, they went bankrupt in 2010, while Netflix is now a $28 billion company, about 10 times what Blockbuster was worth at its peak. Finally, Kodak is another example of a company that became too complacent and anchored in its past when it failed to move into the digital world either well enough or fast enough. Now, the firm accounted for 90% of film and 85% of camera sales in America and they even invented digital photography. Such a household brand should have been ideally placed to take advantage of this shift to a new technology. Yet despite being founded on a culture of innovation and change, this failure to adopt a new business model ultimately proved to be the company's downfall. Now there's no doubt that the racing and betting sector also needs to work faster, better and stronger in order to avoid the same fate as a Nokia, Blockbuster or Kodak. This year's forum will therefore focus on three key areas, digital, social, and commercial, with experts from both inside and outside of the industry. So just to quickly run through the running order for today, we have two opening keynote speakers, followed by our debate on how to work on innovation. Our first session then is all about digital, when we look at the connected race course and the value of information. Then we have our social session after lunch, looking at community platforms and social gaming. And finally, in our commercial section, we look at sponsorship, partnerships, and advertising. But let's quickly return to our word cloud now, and we'll see what you've all come up with. Now, these are the main associations that you have with the word innovation. You can see competitive, technology coming out very strongly there, along with creativity, change. We've got mobile ideas, disruption, future, internet. Courage is an important one. I think it's really interesting to see there that some of those terms you would te uh, say were positive, others were slightly negative, talking about the threat that um, change and innovation presents us. It'll be interesting to see how many of these themes develop through the course of the day. Now, of course, nowhere has the need to change the business model be more keenly felt than in the music industry, where they've had to respond to the dual threats of downloads and now streaming services. Whereas once a band would go on tour to promote an album, 
they now have to release music in order to promote their forthcoming tour, and often now, indeed, cutting out the middleman altogether. The commercials have been completely turned upside down. It will therefore be fascinating to hear from our first keynote speaker today, Per Sundin, the Vice President for Universal Music in the Nordic, Nordic region, who will outline how his organization has had to adapt in this challenging and competitive market. If I could welcome to the stage, Per Sundin. <laughs> 